Welcome to Hollywood Crime Scene. I'm your host, Joe Hollywood. And joining me, as always, is Imaginos Pete. Hello, hello. Hello, Imaginos Pete. Andrew, what's the nickname this week? <clears throat> Andrew, one year anniversary Walker, because, Joe, <laughs> tell our audience what today or we roughly just is. Did the math and figured out just prior to hitting the record button on here that uh, we are just past our one year anniversary yes, of are. Hollywood Crime Scene. It's been a lot of fun, Joe. Thank you so much for hosting. Every episode has been fun, and I think they have been. I think we've grown a lot over the with each episode. So I mean, when we started, there was a plastic wall between us, and now yeah, <laughs> yeah. I finally moved that. I was getting tired of it. I think to celebrate after we're done, let's go out and commit a crime. Yeah. Does it sound good? Some and, hey, I'll record it. I'll record it and <laughs> get it up on clues. YouTube. Yep. Why not? I mean, <laughs> I mean of course, we're, I, I hate telegraphing our crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's burglarize the old Jimmy Hoffa house, right? There, <laughs> there you go. I hear there are some, uh, there are some mementos left behind. Uh, oh, okay. Trying to get the scoop on that, yeah. It's like the poor quality of criminals today who like geotag themselves. Like, <laughs> yeah. is entering like First National Bank for robbery. I'm like, oh, I wonder if you did it. <laughs> All right, so today's topic is, is going to be a little bit of a continuation of our last topic where we talked about Hollywood sex scandals. Um, even though we're going to expand a little bit uh, on this episode, it's still going to sort of revolve around that. Um, you know, we've had a conversation outside of this room and maybe even during previous podcasts where we discussed whether or not when an artist, such as a musician or an actor, commits a crime or gets into some sort of trouble, do you allow it to affect your opinion of that artist's work? If it's a musician, do you continue to listen to music, his or her music? If it's an actor, do you watch their movies or TV shows? And I, I think it's a fascinating topic, and I've talked to other people about it, and as a matter of fact, we had someone in the studio earlier today, and I was talking to her about it. And she's like, oh, where's your podcast? I, got, I need to listen to it. Um, it's something that people are interested in. Yes. And a, a kind of a, a conclusion that I came to is it depends on, first of all, the seriousness of the accusation or crime. And also, how much do you love the artist? Yes. Are you willing to look the other way when one of your favorite artists commits an atrocity? So that's going to be our topic today. Um, now, on our past podcast, we focused pretty much prim primarily on the golden age of Hollywood. And we may touch right. on that a little bit again today. But a lot of the names that I have here in front of me are, are from the last decade or so, scandals that have uh, broken over the last decade. And I do have to admit that in some cases, yes, the work has been impacted by the accusations, and I find it uh, difficult to enjoy that work um, because as soon as I sit down to watch something or listen to something, those images play into my head. One that immediately comes to mind is Michael Jackson. Now, yeah. I'm a child of the 80s, or I should say a teenager because I was pretty much a teenager in the 80s. Uh, with the newly uh, created MTV and all that stuff. And MTV was an event. And every time Michael Jackson launched a new video, we would have friends and family over gathered around our console TV uh, to watch Thriller or oh, yeah. Bad or Beat It, uh, Billie Jean. Uh, every, every music video was an event, something to get everyone excited about. Smooth Criminal. Yeah. and Can, can I ask real quick? Uh, from that era with like Thriller and he was he put out what six singles from that album? Oh sure, like that. yeah, yeah. I'm just curious, how often were those videos coming out? Like like once a month or um, like probably roughly once every couple of months, if if not more frequently. I'm trying to think like how how did they milk? How much did they oh, milk they that kept album? It going yeah, and yeah. of course subsequent 
tour, of course, I'm sure, which was yeah. huge. Yeah, and it was it was one of the biggest selling albums of all time. So oh, they, yeah. every time they released a new song, that would keep it yeah. at the top of the charts, you know? Yep. Anyway, thank you. And and those those videos were like watching many movies, yeah. like Thriller. In my opinion, Thriller's the greatest uh, music video of all time, <laughs> hands down. Like the stuff that it was like watching a movie. It, I think it's like it what, like 10, yeah. 15 minutes long or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, grow, growing up being a teenager in the eighties, Michael Jackson, you can't discuss the eighties without discussing Michael Jackson. And then of course, over time, he started getting more and more eccentric and the, the facial reconstruction that he started doing got more and more bizarre and, mm-hmm. And toward the end there, it looked like his face was melting, like he yeah. it, he was gradually transforming into a monster. Yeah. Um, but people were willing to overlook that just because of the genius that he was, the artist that he was. But it wasn't until later when these accusations started flying. And, you know, part of me wants to blame the parents of these uh, young boys who are allowed to stay at Neverland yes. with Michael. Like if Imagine I'm a parent that happening today, right? Exactly. And th- that wasn't that long yeah. ago. Yeah. And so you have to imagine that these parents had, had ulterior motives. If, if someone approached them and said, Hey, uh, Michael wants your son to come stay with him for the weekend at Neverland. I know part of you is going to be like, Oh my God, this is Michael Jackson. This is a lifetime, uh, an opportunity of a lifetime. But would a responsible parent allow their child to be unsupervised with Michael Jackson for a weekend? So, like I said, I, I can't help but wonder if parents were thinking about a payday and using their children as uh, bait or something. I don't know. Um, but it wasn't until years later when uh, some of these children were adults where they started making accusations that when they stayed at Neverland that Michael Jackson uh, was... Yeah, how many of them knew at the time that he was? I mean, look, even then, you just really Michael Jackson wants my eight year old boy to stay for a weekend with yeah. other eight year old boys. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm... And so at the time, I don't know. Maybe maybe they didn't think anything was going on, and and a lot of time passed before the accusations came out. Then these these children who were now adults, when they went to trial and started testifying and describing what had happened at Neverland Ranch, that's the moment where I found it difficult to listen to Michael Jackson's music. If I'm driving in my car, listening to, you know, 80s music on WOMC or whatever, and a Michael Jackson song comes on, I kind of cringe and I reach for the dial and I put something else on. I, I, I was just looking this up because I couldn't remember. Uh, can you guys remember what year it was that the first sex abuse accusation became public no I, I do not i could not what would you guess in the 90s well yeah it was definitely the 90s well the the abuse happened in what the 80s or the 90s and then the accusations i, came yeah, I don't know later. They, i don't know when they actually stopped yeah but i, I want to say the accusations kind of flew around in in the years before was it before his death oh yeah so, oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah okay so, so what do you got so it's way back. This was 30 years ago. This, this The first accusations became public in 93. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then... Which means the accidents were happening in the 80s. Yeah. So, and after a while, I be, but like, I remember hearing about that as a kid, but then it I, then it went away for a long time. Mm-hmm. But I remember that being, I, I was nine years old when that happened. I remember seeing that on TV. Yeah. I just couldn't remember exactly what year it was. I remember being very young. And my parents were like, like taken aback by it because yeah. both of them. I, I grew up listening to, to Thriller and, right. uh, on vinyl with my parents. What I want, so, what I want to know is how did any no one in his support circle say this is a bad idea? Don't do this. Manager, lawyer, be, stardom, same, money. S- same thing that happened to Elvis, surrounded by yes men. I mean, yep, exactly. His, his doctor, what Conrad Murphy, that would give him whatever drug he wanted just so he could go to sleep. Well, that's that's the other thing. Right. You know, that's another similarity between Elvis and Michael is is they had doctors who just gave them whatever they wanted because they were the doctor to the stars. And I really believe that those that the abuse of prescription medication is what killed both of those guys. Right. Not to oh, mention abso- other celebrities. But abso- absolutely. Yeah. Well, those doctors. I wonder if the, those were the private physicians because if that's your if that's your only major client, you don't kill the 
golden goose. Yeah. Because you can't get money off a dead person. The problem is, though, yeah, the, you know, they were, if they were to say no, then they would go elsewhere, and they didn't want to lose that client. So. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, that yeah. when you have multiple clients, like, well, I have a lot of high-profile clients, and it just goes into, that's an entirely, that's that'll be an interesting topic one day. Yeah, because another person who falls under that category is Marilyn Monroe. I feel yeah. like she was over-prescribed. I don't think anything she took was illegal. I think it was all prescriptions, yep. and doctors just didn't check on each other. And, and uh, strangling in the bathtub yeah. uh, by <laughs> Joe. You know how I feel on this topic by, by, by Marilyn's by, uh, passing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By one of the Kennedys. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm we could we could go on. And on. I know. Another I mean, topic that, that for another hole. day. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so in the case of Michael Jackson, yes. As more and more information came out about what he did with young boys at the time, and and I try to take into consideration that Michael Jackson did not have a normal childhood, and yeah. what happens with yeah. a lot of celebrities who lost out on a childhood that they try to reclaim that later in life. And so here he is, you know, laying in a bed with, you know, preteen boys in his mind, he's probably thinking he's a preteen boy when he's not, he's a grown man playing around with these he, preteen boys. He was thrust into international stardom at what? Age five. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe five, five, six. He, was he like the? Young, was he's yeah. the youngest? He's the youngest. Jackson's. Yeah, and so, and so clearly he, the breakout star of the of, of the five. Jackson brothers. He was the youngest because yeah. Janet was younger. That's right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so even developmentally, he was at least one year behind each one of those brothers. Yeah, I, I don't know what the age gap is. No, I'm, I'm not too familiar. He he was the one that was getting he the all the star attention. And all he was told, uh, you know, 24-7, you, you got to go out there and perform. You got to go out there and perform. You can't, you're not going to go to school and have normal friends, a normal childhood, uh, be able to regularly go to church or whatever. You know, those yeah. normal uh, building blocks. Yeah, and playing with other kids and things like that. Yeah. So so stardom is what it, what drove Michael yeah. that way. And, and, he, and there never was a period during his youth where he, he was able to, he was always in the spotlight, you know, back in the seventies and early eighties, there was off the wall and he had a bunch of hits from that. Do you know that just real quick, do you know the song, uh, this place hotel? No, I don't know that one. So the, the chorus is, uh, heartbreak hotel, but he had to change it to the, the title of the song to this place hotel because hmm. The Elvis Presley estate was yeah. was going to be like no, it's too close to heartbreak. Hotel. <laughs> but anyway, Joe, if you can, if you want to hear Michael at right before it was an album right before he got involved with Quincy Jones, it was the mm -hmm. last album he d produced himself with a couple yeah. other people, and uh, it might be off the wall. I don't remember, but the song is called. This Place Hotel. It's okay. a brilliant song. All right. Yeah. But yeah, he had, you know, uh, everyone talks about Thriller and, and that, yes. but, but prior to Thriller, man, he had hit after hit after hit with Ben, the song uh, dedicated <laughs> I mean, to he, rats. Yeah. I mean, but here's uh, the thing. you, I wouldn't go, I, I, I hear what you're saying. When I hear it on the radio, I, I think, oh, it's Michael. Oh, it's Michael. <laughs> yeah. But he, you he, can't he, deny that the, the man's great. talent yeah. and, and the groundbreaking. Like, I, I think back, the, I don't know if you guys remember this, uh, but I remember sitting down to watch the Motown 25th anniversary special. Now they've celebrated 50 years, but 25 years oh. before that, um, there was a television special where they brought back a bunch of Motown stars. Marvin Gaye, just before his father killed him, oh, uh, and a bunch wow. of other stars. And it was amazing. It was an incredible special. And Michael agreed to appear as part of the Jackson 5 if he was also allowed to perform solo. So he came out. They did like a medley of Jackson 5 songs. Then he kicked his brothers off the stage and went into Billie Jean. And it's the first time the world saw him do the moonwalk. And, yeah, okay. the, and you got to watch the clip online. The crowd was like, what? are we looking at like they had never seen anything like it before. And for me, it was so monumental that when I went to a conference in Pasadena a few years ago, I found out that the, there's this uh, auditorium. Uh, I think it's called like the Pasadena civic center or something like that is where they film this special. And I walked over to it and I sat in the audience, they were getting ready for some show. And I sat in one of the chairs looking at the stage going, that's where the moonwalk was born. This is this is where Michael really hit his stride. Right. So, yes, yeah, so Michael did have an impact on me, uh, as he did everyone who enjoyed yep. music. And pop um, culture. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyone, yeah. anyone that imitates a moonwalk, a sideways moon, there are kids, you go on YouTube right now, there are some kids that go to their homecoming rally, and one of them wore the white glove, yeah, yeah. the hat, and performed the moonwalk, and they and the crowd cheers. Oh, yeah. And these are kids who were, Michael's been dead for a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2009. And so it's. And if you've never been to the Motown Museum, you need to go. Apparently, Michael donated a glove and I think a hat or something uh, to the Motown Museum. And so you can see those in a showcase. Um, so, yeah, he's he's definitely had an influence. He's definitely a legend. Um, but unfortunately, when you're trying to separate the artist from the art, unfortunately, due to the nature of, of the, the crimes that he's been accused of, it's hard for me to enjoy the art anymore. How do you guys feel? Can you, you, you mentioned that, you know, you're like, Oh, this is Michael. Oh, this is Michael. But uh, I, I, if, if there's nothing else, usually I, I don't, I, I can't turn away from some of the songs. Yeah. Cause I don't go and listen to, like I said, I don't actively go and look at, Oh, I haven't heard Thriller in a while. Let me go yeah. pull up that video. But if it comes on the radio, I'll go, yeah, if it's part of one of that eighties flashback, there'll be Madonna, there'll be Cindy oh, sure. Lauper. And all of a sudden in comes Michael. I go, yeah, okay. I mean, it's in there. I know what you, I know what the allegations are. Now, the problem yeah. with Michael is that they never had an OJ trial. Yeah. They never had that. And there was no murder involved. And you had people defending. Like Macaul- Macaulay Culkin was a kid. And he says, I hung up with Michael. Nothing ever happened to me. I'm like, right. right. And so when you get people who were defending him and they say, well, look, I've stayed there. Nothing ever happened. And then there's a, some aspect of victim blaming. Like, how did you, why would you, I would never send my kid. I'm like, the right. kids didn't ask for this. Yeah, yeah. If it happens, that's why I feel like they were pawns. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Then you, you, you yeah, kind of yeah. look at the parents and like, okay, don't. You know, it's like, oh, why would you give your kid to them? Like, yeah, why would you give your kid? Like, mm-hmm. like why don't you like, no, Junior, go visit, ride the <laughs> roller coaster, get off. <laughs> I'll bring you back tomorrow if Mr. Jackson likes you. Yeah, yeah. Feed Wants the giraffe, you. play with the monkey. And yeah, you're not spending out. overnight here unless <laughs> I'm staying with yeah. you. Am I staying, Michael? No, then no. Yeah, <laughs> it was irresponsible. Andrew, what about you? The, you know, did, I, did I, any of the accusation, ex, accusations affect your enjoyment of his I, music? You're talking about specifically Michael? Michael okay. Jackson. Yeah. Um, like, I'll preface this by saying, like, like with a lot of things, you have there, there are, are s- several things you have to take into account, like your proximity to this person, how, you know, how much you love their art and how deeply it goes back to your childhood. Um, also, okay. Yeah. He didn't kill anybody, but he was, he was a perv to kids, you know, allegedly most likely, I think. And that's why I said it's the nature of the accusations that get me. I I don't know if I would react the way I did if he did murder somebody. Hang on one second, Joe. (laughs) Andrew, are you running for Senate? What kind of answer? Man, say what you want to say. What? (laughs) Would how do you feel about Michael? Like, for instance, like for me, if I hear it and the music comes on, I go, Michael, Michael. Yeah. Like it, 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 it hits me. And then, but you, know, you, you can't deny the man was. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, like I, I love a lot of his songs. A right, lot of the songs go. that weren't singles were. There you go. Yeah. And I, and I will, I will bring them up on Apple. Sure. There you go. iTunes and listen to them. Um, but like if it were someone like some, some jerk or like, 20 year old rapper today that I thought, Oh, okay. One of his songs was kind of catchy one time, but then he goes out and gets accused of rape or whatever and, fi- and gets found guilty. Like I have no reason to listen to that again. Right. Right. It, it's all a matter of true proximity. Uh, how well, the type of impact it's the same. It's the same thing that you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't narc on like your sister or brother. If, if they committed a misdemeanor, Right. Mm-hmm. But if your your fifth cousin twice removed who <laughs> you haven't talked to in ten years and you is an active jerk yeah. and and they did something really wrong and there is a victim and you're the only one that has you know knowledge to sure. have yeah. justice served. Yeah. Then I I might consider that. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you see what I mean when it comes to proximity? When it comes, yeah, to, I think you to make, levels. It, it's the but type with of Mike, impact. With, so all in all, Michael, um, I can separate the art from yeah. the artist. He, I can for him. Yeah, yeah. Now another one. We'll change topic a little bit. Uh, another one that again, I was huge, huge fan of this artist, and I, I'm not anymore. And I I can't watch the reruns. Let's talk a little bit about Mr. Bill Cosby. Oh, yeah. Um, 
One of the greatest stand-up specials in the history of stand-up comedy was Bill Cosby himself. It was an HBO special. Is that the one where he's sitting in the chair? It's just he has his brown suit on. And yeah. he just sits and talks. My parents and, love that one, too. And he doesn't tell jokes. He tells stories. Yeah. And he tells a story about uh, serving his children chocolate cake when their mother was sick and uh, and all kinds of stuff. And then he like he swore, which is rare. Um, but that's the line goes, he says, uh, they, they were, he was talking about using cocaine or something and they were like, Mr. Cosby, do you use cocaine? And he says, no. And they said, well, it enhances your personality. And he goes, well, what if you're an asshole? And that's such a great line. And it's one of the greatest stand up specials of all time. Well, not too long ago, I was, I was trying to thin out my DVD collection just to make room for new stuff. And I was going through titles and I pulled out my DVD of Bill Cosby himself, and I just couldn't see me ever watching it again. And I threw it in a box with a bunch of other DVDs and donated it to the library. I can't, I, I have no interest in watching reruns Joe, Joe, of the Cosby show. Don't give it to the library where little kids can check it out. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, if they don't know, it's perfectly fine. But um, that's another one for me personally. I can't separate the art from the artist based on the nature of the crimes that this person committed. And, and it's, and it's so interesting to me that the person who sort of outed him, I don't know if you guys remember the story, yes, comedian yes. Hannibal Burris yes. uh, was talking about what a hypocrite Bill Cosby was because he would always talk about, you know, the black kids should pull up their pants and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, who are you to judge? You raped yeah. women. And people are like, what now? Right. And, 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 and yeah. Cosby would tell, talk down to Eddie Murphy and yeah. a couple other ones yeah. saying, why do you, why are you swearing? Yeah. You know, there's kids that look up to you. I remember Richard Pryor. <laughs> would be like, I can tell you what you want to say. Edit, edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so here Bill Cosby was telling these up and coming comedians that, you know, the filth coming out of your mouth and here, <laughs> and Hannibal Burris is like, you rape people. And, and everyone was like, what did he say? Like, is that true? And he, he challenged people. He said, Google Bill Cosby rapist. He says, you will get more hits than if you Google Hannibal Burris. And people started taking into it. It was like, oh, my God, that this has gone on like his entire career. And people were afraid to say anything because he was rich. He was powerful. He was And famous. there's a network of people that protected him, a la Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. There, yeah. there had to be lawyers and, 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 and agents and, and, you know, accounts, bank, bankers, everything. A similar thing happened with, and I don't know if, Chappelle was the first one, but you remember who he made fun of on Chappelle show, uh, a rapper, what he would do to underage women. And then it turned out. Oh, R. Kelly. R. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as I know, so Chappelle did the same thing to R. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it must for, so it must be one of those things for the, the two younger comedians. Yeah. Maybe they got to a point where they were personally, uh, uh, offended, like yeah. slighted behind the scenes privately by yeah. Cosby and R. Kelly to the point where they're like, you know what? Fuck these guys. We're, yeah. we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to call you out for the monsters you are because uh, everyone, everyone has receipts. Uh, yeah. There are women victims, uh, yeah, girl victims I, yeah. that need people justice. Talk. People talk in, in that industry, in those circles. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's, absolutely. Hearing Hannibal, Hannibal Burris talk about it so casually, you have to imagine that it's been going around in circles for a while and, you know, probably at parties and get-togethers. Because, and, yeah, he, he's relatively young or was relatively young and relatively unknown at that time when he broke. Mm -hmm. So he had, if, he, if he had to know about it, then think of the... the Upper levels of comedians yeah, who've known exactly. about us since the 1970s. Yeah. So <laughs> apparently, um, yeah, one Cosby. of his victims, uh, Andrea Constan, apparently she won uh, a settlement, like a multi million dollar settlement, okay. without pressing charges. And Cosby was, was, he came in and had like a conversation with prosecutors, and they recorded his conversation where he pretty much admitted to it. And no charges were ever filed. She received a settlement. They tried to sweep it under the rug. And then later, charges were filed. 
and he went to prison. He was sentenced to prison, as we yep. all know. Yep. Now, originally, the sentence was going to be three to 10 years um, for drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constant in his home in 2004. But then, much to either the joy or consternation, depending on whether or not you're a fan, uh, in 2021, a, pan- a panel of Pennsylvania State Supreme Court judges ruled that his rights were violated because what they had used as evidence against him was the conversation that was recorded during the civil and suit. The, yeah. And it was inadmiss- in, inadmissible. It should have yeah. been, yeah. Yeah. So and so he got off on a technicality. Exactly. Yeah. And and like the victim said, it doesn't mean he's not guilty. It doesn't right. mean he's innocent. Uh, and, yeah, and it's a every, travesty. To everybody make. knows. But I've heard several members of the, the, the Cosby show, like, still, like, still defended him. Yeah. After all of that, which yeah, yeah, Felicia Rashad for a while stood right by us because here's the thing, when they were around, when he was around them, apparently you don't crap where you eat, so mm-hmm. maybe all that stuff happens offset away. I'm, from I'm sure yeah. he was, pro- I'm sure he was professional on set, like you know, you know, and, oh and, sure, and, and it was fine, but. At parties and when he would get women one on one, that's yeah. when yeah, and, and happened, a lot of so. these people lead lead dual lives. Like uh, Bob Crane, who was in Hogan's Heroes, you know, he was beloved comedic actor, radio DJ, uh, all that stuff, and he had a private life that was disturbing. Like eyes wide shut, disturbing. Separated yeah. those, and I'm sure when when it the news broke after he had was murdered that. People were like, he did what now? And so, yeah, these people leave, leave these dual lives. And, and when the allegations break, they're like, wow, I was not aware of that. Um, here's a little side note. Um, when I think about some of the earliest memories that I can conjure up in my head, one of the earliest memories that come up, and I had to have been maybe five years old at the time, was going to the Michigan State Fair and seeing Bill Cosby perform at the Michigan State Fair. Wow. And what's weird about this memory is I knew who Bill Cosby was at like five years old. And I remember him talking about a roller coaster and doing all the Bill Cosby noises, doing the, the roller coaster noises. But I knew who Bill Cosby was when I was about five years old performing at the Michigan State Fair. Do you, do you, he, he hadn't done the Jell-O commercials by then. Not, not at that point. No, I was going to ask later. you, Joe, did you... Were you introduced to him on TV or via a record or? Probably television and talk shows and things okay. like that. I mean, I was so young. I, I yeah, that's, don't that's, know. That's, that's I'm very... sure I've seen him on TV. But, yeah, I, I distinctly remember thinking that's Bill Cosby when okay. I watched. Nice. And so that's one of my earliest, earliest memories. And, and, again, like Michael Jackson, he was a genius, big star, amazing TV show that – portrayed uh, African-Americans in a positive light yes. that they could be doctors and successful and, right. and you know, not live in the ghetto and that sort of stuff. So he had this huge influence on how people, uh, uh, white America perceived black families in the 80s, you know. Um, and so, yes, he has this legacy. But unfortunately, when you learn about all the, the accusations and his dark, dark side that he just seems unapologetic about, like, he, he's never seemed to have come forward and said, I screwed up and I've learned from this. I mean, it's something he continued to get away with his entire life. You know, when you started this topic, you, you brought out a lot, of, a lot of variables, you know, the nature of the crime, uh, were they repentant about it, how much attention did it garner, how many uh, gory details came out, you know, uh, how old were you when, what type of t- attachment you how close, like you were saying, if it's your fifth cousin twice removed, yeah. no, you don't care. Mm-hmm. But how, how much what kind of impact, impact were they on you? So you think of, Bill Cosby didn't apologize, didn't really seem apologetic about it. In fact, became more defensive, retreat, had more attack dogs than being generally sorry about what he did. Yeah, no, yeah, no remorse. Yeah, no, no. But if you juxtapose it to someone like um, Tim Allen, Tim Allen was busted for dealing cocaine. Yeah, yeah. before he ever got started, and then he went to went to prison for it, and then. Thankfully, got his life turned around yeah. and yeah. became, you know, when home improvement is he's, he's Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, yeah. sure. Now, since uh, I'm going to follow up on what you said, I want to talk about an actor who had a troubled past. And I would like to think that this is an example of somebody apologizing and changing and moving forward. Mark Wahlberg, mm-hmm. uh, when he was yeah. a teenager, uh, on several occasions as a teenager, he would throw rocks at black children while calling them racial slurs. He did it multiple times. 
Uh, years later, he attacked two Vietnamese men, knocking one unconscious with a stick while punching another, um, and again, hurling racist slurs at these Vietnamese men. He was sentenced to two years in prison, but only served 45 days. Um, now, he has come forward, has apologized profusely, and even one of the Vietnamese men said, I forgive him. I forget him. I truly believe that he has learned from this and moved on. Good. Other people aren't so quick to forgive him. Some of the victims of these children that had rocks thrown at him, they're like, oh, just because he's a star, I'm not going to forgive him. So what are your thoughts on Mark Wahlberg? Is this an example of somebody making a mistake when they were young? We all made mistakes when we were teenagers. Sure. I was an idiot teenager. Me too. Um, but it, you, you have to move on. You have to learn and vow not to hurt people again. Are you convinced that Mark Wahlberg is a changed man? When it comes to things like this, you'll always have that side eye on there, meaning that it's it's almost like it's almost like an allergic reaction. Your system's been primed. Like for instance, six months from now, something comes out about a, a potential racial incident with Mark Wahlberg. Would anybody be surprised? Yeah, exactly. You'd be like, well, psh, I guess it don't. It was like clench, It was like tensing a muscle. You know, yeah. it finally had to give. You wouldn't be that shocked. You hope he's changed. The actions will speak <clears throat> louder than words. You know, yeah. you say, "I'm sorry." Hey, if you've lived a clean, clean life since then, you're genuinely, I mean, because how do you measure genuine, rep, you know, uh, remorse? Or, yeah, yeah, remorse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I would, I would think so. I, in this particular incident, I can't say it's had any impact. I, I enjoy his movies uh, when I see him. Uh, Andrew, you, yeah, you're yeah, right there? Yeah, I totally agree, Joe. Uh, from what I've read about him, I, I think since then uh, he's been fine. I mean. Yeah, he's made a lot of garbage movies, but uh, he's <laughs> better seen... not be talking about Ted because Ted was <laughs> I, a joy. You know what? I, I've never seen that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, I knew. It's, I had some point during this podcast. I, I was expecting to hear those words come hey, out. Hey, baby, of mouth. maybe every episode, every episode like clockwork. But <laughs> I, no, I, he I, has I, also I keep losing these Vegas bets. He also has made a lot of good movies, so I can't I can't disparage him. He yeah. he, he he takes the movies that he that is given to him. So. Yeah. I respect that he works. He works. He works nonstop. He's always putting out s something, and uh, yeah, I have nothing again. I have no problem with. It. So yeah, Mark, we're rooting for you. We yes. hope we put that behind you. But, but you're on notice. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, like, you're you're a, don't slip up, man. Yeah. Don't slip up. Uh, another person I want to talk to. He he didn't necessarily commit a crime, but man, this makes me cringe. Uh, Woody Allen. Now, um, I guess you could say part of this is a crime. Uh, Woody Allen has been accused by his adopted daughter, Dylan Farrell, of molesting her when she was seven years old. Um, and he's denied it. And uh, I guess that's a he said, she said sort of a thing. No, no charges have been filed. Nothing has come out of it other than her accusations. But the, what's even more creepy than that was he married Soon Yi Previn who was the adopted daughter of Mia Farrow and Andre Previn. When Mia and Andre divorced, Mia started dating Woody Allen, uh, and they divorced in 79, and they soon uh, Mia soon after began a relationship with Woody Allen. Uh, in 1992, when uh, Soon Yi was, I think, around 21 or so, uh, Mia Farrow found nude photos of Soon Yi in Allen's home. He did not deny it. He said, yeah, I just took these yesterday, I think he said. Um, and it was just weeks after he had sex with her for the first time is what he said. Um, he was 56 at the time. So, and she was around 21 at the time. And they have since gotten married, right? They're yes. married today. So the, the question here is, this guy was in a relationship with Mia Farrow. Now, Soon Yi claims that she wasn't, she didn't look at Woody Allen as a father figure, even though she was the adopted daughter of a woman who was in a romantic relationship with Woody Allen. Something had to have been going on prior to the moment where those two consummated their relationship. Um, but to yeah. end up having a sexual relationship and then marrying your ex's adopted daughter is so wrong. 
Yes. And so creepy. Yeah. Yes. And now, unlike Andrew here, I've never been a huge fan of Woody Allen. I've never really cared much for his movies. They always sort of came across as pretentious to me. But besides that, <laughs> I I could never sit down and watch another Woody Allen movie after learning about that relationship. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Woody Allen relationship? I was never a huge fan of Woody Allen. I, I've seen, you know, Annie, um, Annie Hall, and uh, it's it's fine. Uh, I unfortunately I saw these movies after they were hyped up a lot, and then that's the worst thing you can do is watch a movie when it's hyped. I'm like, yeah, it's it's fine. Yeah. It's not what you guys are making it out to be. But then it doesn't help. There with with Woody Allen, you haven't heard about some other like anywhere on set, any other any other relationships. Dylan, the Dylan Farrow thing doesn't help. And then you say, okay, he said, she said, but then he marries the adopted daughter. You know, like. This is like bad porno. Yeah. <laughs> this is like one of those weird porno situations. Yes. Like this step, is so the stepdaughter porno. And, and, yeah. and if this is like in now, you think, come on, Woody. This is now. This really doesn't help your cause. Exactly. In the he said, she said. I'm like, well, this seems really. You didn't like you said. This didn't just happen with Sun Yi. Like, how long was this going on? Like, when she turned 16, 17, yeah, 18, when she hit people. Like, what were you doing? Yeah. Were you keeping tabs on her? Going, like, wait a minute. Oh, 18. Yeah. Now. Blow out your candles. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, you are legally, so... you're legally allowed to drink this now. Yeah. And and the odd thing is, is a lot of the actors and actresses that worked in his films, about half of them regret, they say they regret working with him, even though I don't know if they knew what was going on at the time. But there's still a, a, a group of them today that defend him and say he did nothing wrong. But Maybe what he did wasn't necessarily illegal, but man, it no. just doesn't I mean, look right. I, I, with you know, with Dylan Farrell, because it's he said she said, yeah, we'll never really yeah. know. But uh, I, I don't even have a big pro- problem with the age difference. It's Hollywood. I mean, I guess it happens, yeah. but it's the fact that they were in the same household. Yeah, you and, you, and you basically role. watch this young girl grow up, and you're like, okay, mom's done now. Now it's time. Yeah, yeah. Like, what is wrong with you, Woody? Yeah. Now, Andrew, you told me you're a Woody Allen fan. So how yes. has this so scandal this, affected your enjoyment of his films? This is one artist that I am truly conflicted about. So um, I, he's one of those guys who has made a lot of movies. There, there were, he's gone stretches where he was putting out a feature every year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just want to point out a couple of them that I think are brilliant. Uh, Bananas, uh, Sleeper. Annie Hall, Manhattan, which is brilliant. Z Leg. Um, what was the one you were telling me? Uh, okay, and is okay. Uh, Match Point with Scarlett Johansson is excellent. Hmm. Scoop with Scarlett Johansson and Hugh Jackman is also excellent. Hmm. I've never even heard of those. The, I, the, they're they're they were they were really indie and small when yeah. they came out, but I I definitely saw them in the theaters. His last good movie was 2011's Midnight in Paris with okay, that's Owen, Owen Wilson, yeah. Rachel McAdams, and a couple other people. And it's his last great movie. Um, it's his, his last movie that I can truly recommend watching if you can also separate the art from the artist because mm. it is a brilliant film. Mm. Because that's one of those things where people say, word on the street if your agent or manager, Woody, Woody's doing a movie. I'm going to get you an audition. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, you can imagine those conversations happening. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if I could add on, um, do I believe that he was inappropriate with the Soon D- Dylan? Uh, oh, Dylan. Yeah. Dylan. yeah. Um, I would say pro- probably yes. Um, with For sure with what he did with the stepdaughter uh, yeah. and their marriage. Um, uh, obviously, there, she might have something mentally wrong. Uh, but, or he's just that type of manipulator that yeah. he's got her in a Stockholm syndrome situation. But either way, that you know, that's that's their business, whatever. Um, but I I can still sep- I can still watch maybe ten or twelve of his movies t- today and still be like, wow, this mm-hmm. guy knew what he was doing. But I'll add one last thing: a lot of uh, his movies, of, uh, if, if anybody knows anything about him, have a lot of uh, sexual jokes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of them are things that would lead you to believe 
that maybe this guy really is a perv. Right. Yeah. This be, is be, because no. of a lot of repetition and a lot of the mm. same Certain type themes. of like, yeah. themes where maybe it's, it's subconsciously running through. And he would cast so. like young ingenue females in this movie and pair them up with much older men. And so, Scar- yes. Yeah, let's just, let's just say maybe when Woody Allen finally leaves this mortar coil, she, she might be a. She, she has some stories to tell. Yeah. In 2004, 2005, 2006, she did a movie called Vicky Cristina Barcelona, where it's her, um, I think Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem, where it's basically them three living together uh, yeah. in Spain. So, yeah. Yeah. You get the point. <laughs> now, since you mentioned him, you know, when he leaves this mortal coil, he is getting up there in age. 80 something. I, I'm, cu- I'm going to be curious. When he passes away and the next Oscar ceremony rolls around, they're going to have a dilemma. Like, are they going to sit around, get their people together and go, man, do we oh, yeah. do a tribute to Woody Allen on this Oscar telecast or do we just bring him up on the in memoriam? I think it'll be in memoriam. Turn down yeah. the mics so you don't hear any booing yeah. and move on. Like, it's it's going to be a dilemma when the time comes. I, I think it'll be. It'll, they'll definitely be, uh, I think it'll just be the in memoriam, but the, the, at the Oscars, but there will be other oh, sure. higher level discussions of, about talking about what we're talking about today, separating. Exactly. He'll get, so, the, he'll yes, get a slightly better that. Roman Polanski treatment because any, he's, yes, he's yes. won an Oscar. So right. you're, you're in the, you're in their hall. Yeah. You're in their records. Yep. Yeah. Now another actor that now. We're venturing into a category here now. Most of the people we talked about today, I'm like, yes, it has affected my appreciation of the work. This one's a little bit more on the fence, and I don't know why for me personally. Let's talk a little bit about Kevin Spacey. Um, Uh. Kevin Spacey, I think, is one of the greatest actors of of my generation. Uh, So many outstanding performances and the usual suspects and... and, um, uh, L.A. Confidential, and American Beauty. I think he won an Oscar for American yeah. Beauty. Yeah. He had always been one of my favorite actors. Then in this Me Too era, these accusations started surfacing where a young actor said, well, he made a pass at me. And my first reaction was, so what? Then it was revealed that the pass was made when the guy was like 14 years old and Kevin Spacey was like 26. And I'm like, God damn it. Yep. And now he's kind of faded from the spotlight. They recast him in some movie where they had Christopher Plummer reshoot yeah. all his roles. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because I loved Kevin Spacey. I love the characters he played. House of Cards on Netflix. Those yeah. first two seasons, the first three seasons, you're like, oh, my God, this is a great performance. Oh, wait yeah. a Now, I don't think any criminal charges have been filed. I think there might be. I think maybe a civil suit or something is going to be getting underway soon. So, so a trial right now started on June 28th in the UK. I was reading yeah. about oh, it wow. today, and yeah, I was okay. talking with a coworker about it. So there were three or four men wow. between uh, either 2001 or 2003 to like 2013. So a, at least a 10 year period. The situation did not improve. Yeah. yeah. And, no, and I'm you, sorry to say. Do you know any facts about no, it? No, I I okay. heard I just heard about the recent one because they were and saying like Kevin Spacey was a predator and like oh geez. So so it's 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 in the UK it's it started uh this June twenty eighth and it's supposed to last four weeks. And I also read that he is supposedly coming out with a movie next month called oh, wow. Peter Three Five or Peter Five Eight. Hmm. And I'm like well, how did they get a distributor for this movie? Yeah, but they got a distributor Bad recently. Timing, um, but it'll. We'll we'll see if if and when it gets released. Like what? But I mean, we'll, we'll also be having the same conversation, right? You know. But I'm not going to stop watching LA Confidential. I know. I'm not going to stop watching Usual Suspects. Yeah. I, I I was 14 or 15, and me and a friend snuck in to see American Beauty at Great Lakes Crossing. Uh, and that was the first movie of his that I've seen. And I was like, who is this guy? This guy knows exactly what I was doing. I knew that <laughs> at that age. I'm like, this, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. 
Yeah, and then yeah. I haven't seen a lot of his movies. Um, there's, there's a great movie called Negotiator with Sam Jackson yes. and him. Mm. And yes. I watched that. I'm like, that's a great performance. It's, yeah. a, it's a, one of those, just a regular action movie, a thriller movie, a suspense movie. Yeah. Like, oh. Yep. So for me personally, because I loved him so much as an actor, like you said, I don't know if I can stop watching his movies. I will be affected when I watch his movies and go, damn it, Kevin. But. Oh, man, I loved his performances in a lot of those movies. So, let <sighs> let me ask you a hypothetical, Joe, and this goes for you too, with anyone else, but specifically for Spacey, if he comes out unscathed from this current uh, legal battle, um, offers some sort of public mea culpa, saying, if I had. Uh, made anyone uncomfortable in the past it was not my intent i i i've i've taken the last five or six years however long he's been out of sight yeah in getting therapy with um you know it, 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 and he makes a comeback and you think he's genuinely um i guess you could say reformed or whatever yeah would can you see your own perspective shifting slightly more positive towards him or will that, will that past accusation of. It depends on what's revealed in the trial. If, right. if he, if he seduced young boys and had sex with them and this is all revealed in the trial, then going forward, I probably won't go see his movies in the theater or whatever. I don't think it'll diminish my appreciation of his past work, but I don't think I would be able to continue to support him in the future. But it's all going to shake down in the trial and see what's revealed. Sure. Again, I mean, if yeah. it's if it if it's just you know yeah. innuendo and and stuff like that. If it comes, we'll if the say the at the end of the trial they find there was no actual direct proof, it was basically just allegations and right. nothing ever happened. And some of the and some of the, the ac- accusers even are found to prove that they made false accusations. Oh, okay. then you go, okay, <clears throat> this guy was getting real because this is also yeah. you want to weigh innocent until proven guilty. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so you hear everything, and you're like, oh God, you yeah. know. That kind of reminds me of a, a comedian, uh, Chris D'Elia, mm-hmm. who has been accused of being a predator, even though, as far as I know, he's never actually done anything with an underage girl or minor or whatever but there are women who accuse him of using his position of power and fame of uh trying to mentor someone and then taking advantage of that situation now that's not necessarily a crime that's just somebody being kind of a douchebag and he he pretty much came out and admitted yes i'm a douchebag i have a problem i have a sex addiction he came out and said he's working on making himself a better person since the accusations he all but vanished from the comedy scene i've seen him live perform stand-up comedy many many times um he's one i'm willing to say okay if you're working to make yourself better you've apologized you've acknowledged that you have a problem then how can you hold it against the guy? And I'm really rooting for him and hoping that he emerges from this because he's he's one of my favorite stand up comics. Okay. So yeah, I mean, as long as as long as there's no crime, but again, it was an abuse of power. Mm-hmm. You know, he knows he has power. You abuse it, so it's like, okay, you know what you did. I mean, you're in that you're in that category. I think I, I've had conversations outside, you know, with you guys and with some of my friends with Mark, who we had on the podcast before, and I, it's kind of like with you saying, Joe. If I had to divorce myself from all of these artists, I wouldn't have anything left to watch. <laughs> I know. I, I, that'd be Everybody missing. Everybody seems to have. I would have so many in gaps. It, whether it's classic Hollywood, I'd be missing people during my time, my my formative years, stuff that I'm looking young actors and actresses right now. I'm like, and then God forbid, in five years, one of them does something I'm like, well, okay, now I can't watch any stuff going forward. I've had to evolve a part of my brain, like a lizard mm-hmm. part of my brain, that says. You, these are just people. Yeah. Your your art and who you are, I have to divorce the two. Yeah. And just watch that. And then if you are a utter piece of crap, <laughs> a soulless dung heap of a human being, I will call you that. I'll never seek you out for advice or <laughs> an autograph or I will never be like, hey, You'll, it's you. I'll never buy you an ice cream cone. Yeah. <laughs> like I wouldn't go and like, uh, pa- you know, uh, patronize any of their stuff. Yeah. yeah, I'd say if it comes on TV, I'll watch it for other people. And yeah, I, I respect the art. I I, I almost have to because otherwise, music, yeah. art, authors, 
you know, politics, leadership, sports, so many but areas. Just just like our, our Lord and Savior said, he who is guilty, throw the first stone, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I wish I had a sound effect right now, a rock flying. Um, you know, what's a dilemma? It's one thing if it's a current actor who's currently working and you find about find out about accusations. It's a different thing when an uh, actor has passed away, they leave behind an entire body of work, then you find out stuff after the fact. That's a little different. You know, we did an episode not too long ago on racism in Hollywood, and one of the names that came up was John Wayne. And finding yeah. out that using some of the words that you just used a moment ago, he was not a good person. He was no. a piece of garbage. He thought the white race was superior to to other races. Um, he was, uh, you know, part of the blacklist uh, name names group. Um, so how does that affect my love of John Wayne movies? Well, if I'm sitting around rainy Sunday afternoon and John Wayne movie happens to be on TV or whatever, I might sit and watch it. But what I have done is uh, I've taken down any posters, things that I had hanging on my wall. I used to have a beautiful giant poster on my wall from the searchers with John Wayne's larger than life face on the poster, and I had to take it down. I couldn't look at it every day. Joe, I got to ask you: Did it when you did that? Did it feel like a Black Lives Matter protester uh, tearing down Jefferson Davis uh, monument? Or? It was exactly <laughs> like that, and I'm not even kidding. It was I, like, I, but there was I'm like sorry, a sa- yeah, there's a sadness to it. But yeah, it's like Nick. Yeah, you like you hear like nice. a, a silent trumpet in the background as I'm taking They're the poster taps. down and. <laughs> And so I ended up replacing that poster with Errol Flynn. <laughs> That's another story. Listeners out there, win, please, man. please refer to a, a very recent episode. <laughs> yeah. That's so, why you just can't eat. So I did take down, yes, yes. I, you know, I didn't want someone coming into my home and going, wow, John Wayne, really? So I tried to remove as much of that as I can. But it, it, I still love his movies. I love his movies and the character that he played on screen, not necessarily right. the person that he was in real life. Uh, we have just under 10 minutes left. I wanted to throw out another name because this is a little different than what we've talked about, but similar. Uh, Harvey Weinstein. He's been accused by more than 80 women of sexual harassment or assault. He is currently serving a 23-year sentence in New York State Prison. Uh, he was convicted on third-degree rape and forcible sexual assault of two women. And since he's been in prison, he's been charged with additional counts of forcible sexual assault. Now, the difference between Harvey Weinstein and some of these other names we threw out is these were actors that you see on screen. Harvey Weinstein, when you watch a movie, is just a name, a producer, a source of revenue. Right. Um, but he helped uh, create some of the greatest films yes. ever made and was yeah. instrumental in the career of Quentin Tarantino. Yep. And uh, I'm sure had has numerous Academy Awards on his shelf. And so for me personally, despite knowing what Harvey Weinstein has, is capable of doing and has done, um, I, I, I don't think that affects my love of Pulp Fiction and the Miramax films and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so has, has the conviction of Harvey Weinstein had any impact on you? No, uh, because Harvey is a uh, is an evolution of old Hollywood. The horror stories that we've covered on on our podcast mm-hmm. of what they used to do back in the day they used yeah, to the own casting actors. couch, yeah, yeah, yeah casting yeah. couch, and they used yeah. to own. Act- I mean, forcible abortions, mm-hmm. forcing actresses to adopt their own children, Black- blacklisting a woman, yeah, black- a- after one uh, turned down, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. you know, yeah. and and they they have fixers. They were, so, I mean, so Harvey is just the next his, you know, and people like that are the next evolution. Same infrastructures there to keep yeah. secrets. It's you know I'm gonna keep quiet, get my career going, and then I don't have to have I don't have to take them home to mom, <laughs> or my parents. But you know it's a paycheck. I do, mm-hmm. and then I, I'll try to work with someone else. Yeah, yeah, Andrew. Yeah, same as that thing. I I I have no emotional attachment. Like we said, Joe and I were talking earlier off camera. Um, there. There seems to be, and it may be a subjective difference, but there seems to be a difference between the money man that yeah. who is just, he doesn't really necessarily care about the art uh, or, 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 or putting forth, you know, whatever, that the heart and soul and the blood and sweat that the actors and writers 
and the creatives uh, put behind it. Um, he he's he's just there just to 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 make the money. So, um, for an executive producer and whatever other roles he's had, um, I, I it, it's it's just it's meaningless. To yeah. Me. I don't, and I don't know if that's heartless, but it's just no. It I means it means I don't he, think he no, I, I don't think it's heartless. I think it's just perspective because it's when I hear stuff like. Weinstein and stuff like that. I think of Casablanca. I'm shocked, shocked that there's gambling going on. <laughs> you know? That's right. And I'm like, yeah, it's it. It is what it is. That's a very seedy industry. Try to avoid it if you can. Yeah. And you know, it, it's one thing if you like. We're, we're writing. If Harvey Weinstein's the only person who's going to produce my thing, I'd have to say, you know what? I'm not going to do it. It's not. It's not worth the de- the devil's bargain. Yeah, yeah. Right. Find another way. But and other people didn't. But, That's but, the thing. But here's the thing say this was 20 years ago and you didn't know what you know today but you as Nick Amati had heard a rumor from Nick Amati I thought it was a Manginos Pete <laughs> uh either from uh you, you had lunch with either Brad Pitt or Tarantino and they said yeah uh if you have a girlfriend uh have Keep her stay stay away from Well Weinstein. that happened with Gwyneth Paltrow yeah, with right? and Brad Pitt yeah. and I, yeah. I I heard a story that he was going to punch his lights out yeah, yeah. so Seth MacFarlane so, joked about it during one. Yeah, yes. One during, I think it was the. <laughs> and it was super <laughs> awkward. And so, she just came out and just was roasting him. And people were like, ha, 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 is Seth yeah. kidding? I'm like, I don't think he is. Now, even though Weinstein got away with a lot for a long time, at least this is one incident in Hollywood where he finally uh, is paying his right. dues, he, where yeah. he's facing the consequences. He'll be in there the rest of his life. Well, Absolutely. He'll, he'll die in prison. Let's put it this way. I'm hoping to God that nothing is ever said about Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just too many things. That like, I'm like, I'm yeah. not going to stop watching Star Wars, yeah. Indiana Jones. I'm not going to stop watching any of that stuff. Sure. No, I think I think if anything was going to come out, that would have come out by now. And, and right. uh, yeah, he just seems to have a good head on his shoulders. Yeah. And, yeah. It's just it's just you just hope like you're talking about a- actors and, and when they pass away, some stories come out. But yeah, yeah, I, I have my suspicions of a couple actors, but uh, I'm not going to ruin. It. <laughs> we'll just wait till after they pass away sure. but uh anyway <laughs> we're just about out of time just a couple more names i want to throw out not that these people did anything illegal but they've done things and said things that sort of tarnished their image mel gibson had a drunken rant uh when he was getting arrested or yeah. patted down or something by a female police officer he blamed the jews for everything it's like bill um, cosby yeah. Alcohol may, it just brings out the asshole in you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're an exactly. It's well, what if you're an asshole? Yeah, and Roseanne Barr, who again has a really great legacy. Uh, you know, her show was the anti Cosby show at the time, yeah. and yeah. Uh, she had a really great legacy. And then, in the case of Roseanne Barr, and maybe in the case of Mel Gibson, I think mental illness plays a major role in the trouble that they had gotten themselves into. And, uh, and Roseanne al- just blames everybody but herself. And also, I think, if I remember correctly, when some of these first things uh, appeared where she would write something, whether it was Twitter or whatever. Oh, online, yeah, Twitter definitely got her in trouble. And um, well, I don't remember if it was a racial thing it or, was, or a yeah. political thing, but the, one of the first things, she blamed it on, uh, well, she did it while on Ambien. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, there, there's some uh, substance issue here. And yeah. also compounded with a mental issue compounded by a, like a, a deep subconscious hatred towards whatever group ends yeah. up you know coming out of their mouth yeah she basically compared an african-american woman i think it was a politician to an ape she compared yeah, it to an ape someone in uh, obama's administration something right. like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so and then there were a lot, all the jew you know jew com- conspiracy exactly stuff that. she even the other day i saw she was on a podcast First of all, who would ever have her on a podcast who in their right mind? Yeah. <laughs> so oh, you're playing me off. Playing, playing me playing off. off. Oh. Let's uh, thank your parakeet. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I hate to cut you off, but we're just about out of time. Yes. Uh, another great conversation, guys. It's yes. uh, been long overdue. Yep. And uh, looking forward to the next one. Happy yes. one year anniversary. One year anniversary. Happy one year anniversary. Thank That's you, right. Joe, for hosting always. All right. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Good night, everybody. Mm-hmm.